Ghana is 80 years old. That his high school education in Ghana at Prempe College, a renowned college in Ghana between the years 1958 and 1962. And then went on to University of Ghana, Legon in 1962 to 1965, where he obtained his Bachelor of Arts in History. After three years of teaching in Ghana, he proceeded to Andrews University in Michigan, USA in 1968, where he earned his MA in history in June 1970. And subsequently to the University of Wisconsin um, in also in the United States, where he earned his PhD in history in May 1974. Over the years, Professor Owusu Mensah has taught history at several African and American colleges and universities, including Babcock University in Nigeria, 1974 to 1985, Valley View University, where I attended as well, um, in Ghana in 1985 to 1988. He left and returned 1990 to 1994, also left and returned again in 1999 until he retired. Professor Kofi Ousumensa has also taught at Oakwood College, now Oakwood University in Alabama, USA in 1989 and Sulusi University in Bulawayo in Zimbabwe between 1995 and 1998. It is fair to say that Professor Kofi Ousumensa is well traveled, not only through um, his studies, but also through his lectureship or professorship in teaching in several countries. Professor Osumensa was awarded um, the Project Look Fellowship in New Haven, Connecticut in USA for the 2001-2002 academic year. He attained full professorship in 1986. He is an author to several books of prominence to us, particularly Adventists, is Onyame Kwame. This is three word, which in English interprets as the Akan God of Saturday. This book was published by the Advent Press in Ghana in 1990. He's also written Saturday God and Adventism in Ghana. This was published in New York by Peter Lang Publishers, 1993. Professor Kofi Ousmensa, it's my honor to introduce you this evening to our session. And it's my prayer that not only tonight, but the coming evenings that your presentation will go a long way to help us learn things that we do not know for those that we already know, enhance them, but for many people seeking deeper meaning of our heritage as Africans to be able to obtain them. Thank you. Have we got Prof on the line? Hello? Oh, fine, I'm fine. Are you there? Is it cold or warm? <laughs> we are supposed to be in our summer, so it's fair to say okay. it is warm here. But depending on where everyone else is, um, it's warm here in London. It might not be the case everywhere in the UK. Good to see you again, Prof. Well, um... I'm so happy and we thankful to the Lord for this program, which I believe will be of meaning to me, to you, and to everybody else who will uh, listen or see it in subsequent days. Uh, it's, it's been my privilege to be with this group for about, uh, you know, at about a week or two. And we have started talking about 
many, many, many things that are relevant to the people of Africa and their heritage uh, beyond the continent. Uh, we want to say a few things that will uh, generate some uh, comments and questions from the audience, because the story is a long one, and uh, it all in the universities and in, in the lecture rooms, we take about uh, uh, three months, sometimes six months, or a whole year to deal with some of these topics that we want to um, understand. And so uh, what I will do today is to uh, give a few uh, sketches here and there about civilization as far as Africans are concerned, uh, so that when the comments and the questions come, then it will, be, it will be more meaningful to all of us so that I can elaborate on some of these points. The questions that um, are to be answered are summed up in a title called the African History, particularly African civilization over the years and the centuries of man's story on this earth. And um, our young people over there in Britain, I understand you are interested in me uh, making some comments about African civilization. And uh, civilization, as I personally define it, is the sum total of a people's way of life. That is, uh, how people live, how they talk, how they arrange their social structures, their political structures, their religious beliefs and practices, and many, many, many other aspects. So the sum total of a people's way of life is what I call uh, civilization or culture. Some people think uh, culture also involves this type that I've just mentioned, minus as, uh, uh, writing and other aspects of growth. When a civilization or a way of life doesn't have a writing uh, to record its ideas, some people call it culture. But when it graduates from culture, it becomes what it calls civilization where things are written down and recorded for generations to come. So the African civilization that I want to mention briefly is this. Over the years, since the creation of the world, according to historical and biblical sources, some 6,000 years, almost 6,000 years ago, the African people that we have on the continent of Africa today originated in the Middle East, what today we call the Middle East, that is, at a confluence of the three major ancient um, continents of Africa, Asia, and Europe. So in, in, in that area of the world, we see African origins. And it is a part of the story of the creation in, in the days of Adam and Eve, way back in the, in the years that I just mentioned about 6,000 years ago, when you do the proper calculation. Now, the area that Africa was involved in this civilization was first and foremost, Egypt. What today we call Egypt. Egypt is next door to Israel and uh, countries like the Sudan or Ethiopia. And when you cross over to Asia, 
you have Syria, um, Israel, Lebanon, and then uh, to Asia, uh, to Europe, you go into Turkey and into the Greek world. So as far as we are um, familiar with the history of Africa, Egypt is the first major center of African civilization. It developed alongside the uh, civilizations in the Euphrates and the Tigris valleys um, in Asia. Egypt had a civilization for thousands of years, at least about three to 4,000 uh, years before it finally succumbed to other powers in that region, particularly Persia and Rome. Ancient Egypt is believed to have started developing what we call kingdoms and um, dynasties, various uh, ruling families that ruled that section of um, Africa for about 3,000 years. Uh, to be precise, they had about 30 dynasties spanning the period from about 3000 BC to about 525 BC when Cambyses, the, the ruler of um, um, Persia came to defeat Egypt. And this civilization was based upon the rule of kings referred to as pharaohs. The pharaohs were, were many, many, many during those times. And they came from various families and they constituted the dynasties that I've mentioned, about, about 30 of them uh, up to 525 BC. And let me just say a few things about the Egyptian civilization, what they did. For instance, the lifestyle that they, de they developed was a monastic one in which men and women were very, very uh, much important to each other. In other words, in Egypt, there was something like equality of uh, the sexes, both males and females could become uh, um, uh, rulers. And they also develop uh, a very interesting aspect of the culture uh, by which they try to keep the ruling family within the same blood. And even pharaohs uh, uh, never try to marry beyond their own families. Sisters and daughters uh, could be married by the males within that same system. It was their way of preserving the purity of the blood of the ruling family. Egypt developed many, many uh, aspects of civilization in the sense of preserving the culture for generations to come to see and appreciate what they did. A good example of what the Egyptians achieved for mankind was the building of what they call the Great Pyramids, stone houses rising to several hundred feet into the sky, built by workmen that were in their thousands, and some of them took years to build. These were what today you may call the uh, uh, skyscrapers. We see these skyscrapers, these tall buildings in the centers uh, or downtown sections of cities around the world. You get them in Africa, you get them in Europe, you get them in Asia, uh, Australasia, the Americas, everywhere. So what we pride ourselves on today, the modern um, uh, mankind generation, talking about the high structures that have been built 
we took um, aspects of these from ancient Egypt with a, with a pyramid. And these pyramids are still standing today. The greatest of them is called the Pyramids of Gizeh, built by the great pharaoh called Khufu of Egypt. So Egypt did that. Egypt also started writing for mankind the hieroglyphics, that is picture writing, which they started to, um, to, to show to the world that we could put things down for generations to come. The picture writing, uh, which they started, eventually were developed into what today we call the alphabet that we use in our modern world. Egypt was also great in doing um, a medical work for mankind. Indeed, the, 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 the mummies of Egypt, great mummies of Egypt, that is uh, uh, dead bodies that were preserved, particularly of the pharaohs. Some of them are still lying in Egypt today. Today, you know, when somebody dies in our world, the person is preserved in, in, in the refrigerators and other things like that for, for days before burial. Well, the Egyptians have been preserving this for at least uh, 5,000 years now. So we see that that was part of their civilization. They also related with the rest of mankind, particularly in the northern section of Europe and along the Nile, the Nile Valley. They were uh, relating with people, uh, trading with them, exchanging ideas with them, and also uh, uh, even intermarrying with them. Some of the people that lived around Egypt even beca became incorporated into the Egyptian uh, society. Libyans, Kushites, Libyans from the west, Kushites from the south, uh, in the Nile Valley, they, they at one time or another were part of the Egyptian uh, civilization. So Egypt was a pioneer civilization as far as world history is concerned for Africa. But not only Egypt, down south of Egypt were also African civilization structures like the Nubian uh, civilizations of uh, Napata and Merio. And these were centers of uh, trade, they were centers of iron industry, particularly Merio, uh, down in the, in, the, in, the, in the Nile Valley, in present day Sudan and South Sudan. You have them there. When you branch out into the eastern section of the Egyptians and the, and the Nubians or the Kushites, you also had the great civilization of the Axumites. Today, the Axumites are generally known as Ethiopians. And they also developed their own civilization very close to that of Egypt. So on the, no on the northern eastern section of Africa, Egypt, uh, Kush or Nubia, and Axum or Ethiopia were centers of ancient African systems of civilization. Like I said, because of the time factor, we can't list many, many of the things that they did. But these are aspects of the, of the early centers of African civilization in that area. Now, as my uh, Africans began to migrate from that section of the world, they dip down into the Rift Valley area of East Africa. And they, they spread over thousands of years, all the way from uh, Axum and Nubia to uh, present day South Africa. These people there that were spreading were Nilos, they call them Nilos, that is, they lived in the Nile Valley, you know, the Nile uh, River as you probably may know, is the longest river in the world. And Africa is blessed with that. It starts, its, its sources start 
from uh, modern day Uganda and the uh, Victoria uh, Lake area through the Sudan and empties its waters into the northern Mediterranean in Egypt. And it is in this valley that the Nilus, that is uh, Africans living in the Nile Valley through to the Rift Valley of uh, East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, and all the way to uh, Tanzania, Malawi, uh, Mozambique. They, in all those areas, they live there. Now, other people also spread out across the northern sections of the savannah regions of West Africa into uh, our western areas of Africa, that's West Africa. Most of these people were all kind of uh, linkages with the civilization that had developed in the Nile Valley of Egypt and, uh, and uh, uh, Kush or Nubia and Ethiopia. And then others also dipped down through the, uh, through, uh, the forest areas in the central and eastern sections of, uh, of Africa into modern day Southern Africa. Uh, as the people were developing these areas of civilization, they also dip uh, the, 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 the tentacles deep into North Africa across from Egypt through a Lib a modern day Libya, uh, to, uh, Tunisia, uh, and also um, Algeria and Morocco. Generally, Africans know these people that live in the northern section and in the desert area as the Berbers. That's the general name given to the African that lived in the northern section of, um, of Africa beyond Egypt. And the areas is also sometimes referred to as the Maghreb, Maghreb. And that, that's an Arabic word, which means the West. As the Arabs, we will talk about them later on when they came to Africa, as they started their movement from Egypt across to uh, Morocco, they looked at that span of land as something like a sea of sand, and they call it the West. As they stood in Egypt, they looked uh, westward, and that is called the Maghreb, the West. And that was the home of the Berbers in North Africa. It is the Berbers that uh, developed uh, small kingdoms in the North and eventually uh, linked up with their brothers and, and sisters down South in the Savannah up to uh, the West African coast. Then civilizations also developed great ones in the Western area of Africa. In West Africa, uh, there were many of them, but three key ones that I want to uh, briefly mention are ancient Ghana, different from modern Ghana, but linkages uh, make them uh, important to, uh, to historians. Ancient Ghana, which was in existence as far back as to the third or fourth century AD, and then uh, lasted until the 11th century AD. Then Mali, ancient Mali, also uh, in the 12th century and lasted for a couple of centuries. And finally, Songa, which was also in West Africa. These were indigenous West African kingdoms that developed on their own because they have been there through the ages for some time and they have settled down, they have built up societies and they had developed their own ways of life. Ancient Ghana uh, had uh, the people called the Soninke, that is the builders, those who built that empire called the Soninke, way back 
in the third and fourth centuries AD where he started developing and putting kingdoms and societies together to build up. They developed themselves and became great traders. They were part of what you call the trans-Saharan trade between West Africa and North Africa. The trans-Saharan trade was a trade that was developed between Africans in the North and Africans in West Africa. It, it was a very prominent one. And it, it lasted all the way up to the end of the 19th century. The ancient Ghanaians, like I said, they call them the Soninke, they were the people that relied on um, their own people uh, uh, building their own societies, their own trade routes, their own religions, their own, you know, what I call, today we call foreign relations contacts with the outside world. Uh, one interesting thing that I want to pass on uh, about ancient Ghana was that history has demonstrated through research by some scholars that many, many people there, when that, country, uh, that, that empire collapsed, in the 11th century, migrated down south. And uh, they occupied what today we call modern Ghana, particularly the forest areas. They came because um, they wanted to abandon the old ancient uh, empire in the, in the Sahel, in the Savannah area, the Sahel area, which the, uh, the Amoravids, the invaders from North Africa, had, um, uh, had, had made trouble for them. They came down south. But before they came down, they developed their culture in such a way that uh, things like um, uh, so, uh, succession to thrones were developed to make it peculiar to them. Their civilization relied on inheritance through women. Matrilineal societies were developed. In fact, when the Arabs went there and they, 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 they felt it was a very odd way of succession, that um, uh, inheritance or through um, the women. Uh, the king of Ghana at the time, the title of the king was called Tunka. Tunka. Tunka is a king. The king then explained to one of the Arab writers that. The reason why they did that was that, you know, the kings used to have several wives and they wanted to preserve the purity of the, of the, of the royal blood, like, just like the Egyptians did. And um, the king explained that um, he could be sure that the, the son of, of his sister con had the same blood as himself. You know, uh, people, uh, you know, uh, of the same um, uh, father and mother, they had the same blood. And so they could be sure that children of the sisters had the same blood as they had. But the children of a wife who unfortunately proved unfaithful to the king meant that that son didn't have the royal blood. You know, that, that, that was quite interesting to the Arabs because, you know, Arabs, like a lot of people, they inherit through um, uh, the, the, the father. But that was the way of contributing to ancient society. They said that we want to preserve our blood and our blood is within uh, our, our, our own family, not with other people coming from elsewhere. Ancient Ghana uh, developed, like I said, a tree uh, with these people. The main thing that they produced and sold was gold. Indeed, it used to be called the land of gold, Ghana, the land of gold. Uh, although the gold was not mined 
in the, the, the immediate environs of Kumbisale, Kumbisale, or the capital city of ancient Ghana. It was my down south in what today you may call um, Guinea, uh, Senegal, and um, Liberia, and Sierra Leone area, the northern sections of those countries. That's where they had this. And so the goal was there. Ivory was also part of the trade that they, uh, the, uh, the, the commodity that they traded in. And then cola nuts and pepper and other things like that were part of this story. Well, ancient Ghana ended. They were succeeded by the, the, uh, the Mande groups called the Mali. Mali established a very important city called Niani. That is where today you have Bamako, but anciently it's called Niani, the capital city of ancient Mali. It, it was like Ghana too, and they did link with the North African people through trade. Uh, then finally you came with Songhai. Songhai was even greater than either Ghana or Mali in, 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 in terms of extent. And the Songhai people were those that developed the mighty civilization of Timbuktu. Indeed, during those days, there was a great university in Timbuktu called Sankore University. And that Sankore University was so prominent and so famous in the ancient world that even people who came from North Africa hoping to lecture in uh, Sankore eventually had to turn students because they, they saw that the standards of education were lower than that of Sankore University professors. Uh, that was part of the civilization that, but not only that, when you go to the Eastern section of West Africa, you also have civilization developed. For instance, in the Northern section, you had the Kanuri and the Hausa people. They developed way back in the BC era. Uh, the Kanuri are the people who live in present day Maduguri area. And then the Hausa, the Hausa original, they call it the Hausa Bokwal, the seven original Hausa states that included uh, cities like Kano, Zaria, uh, Gobil, Kasina, and the rest. They were all centers of these mighty people that developed. And then when you dip down south, you also had people in present day Nigeria that you may call the Yoruba. Indeed, there's a very funny story about the Yoruba. They claim that civilization began at Ile Ife, that is the ancient traditional capital of the Yorubas in Nigeria. They claim that Odudua, that is the, the god of the Yoruba people, they send somebody to come and begin creating the world. Well, that is the whole oral tradition. But the Yorubas also developed a very mighty civilization in present day Yoruba land and in Benin city and the area of um, present day Lagos and Ibadan. They were also African peoples. Then you also go to uh, the, the, the much of the rest of Africa down south. There, there, there are people, a general big group of people, uh, civilization uh, uh, beginners in Central, Eastern and Southern Africa. The general name given to these people is the Bantu. Bantu uh, is the plural form of a word that is called Muntu. Muntu is a person, but Bantu uh, is translated as people. It is these people that coming from the Nile Valley area into present day, the junction area of Nigeria and Cameroon, they started developing, but then they decided to go down south. And it, this bound to migrations over thousands of years that populated 
the whole region of Africa from the area of um, Cameroons and Nigeria down south to so Congo, Angola, Zambia, um, Kenya, Malawi, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, uh, all the way to South Africa. It is a big group of people and the general name is the Bantu. So they dominate the civilization of the Southern section and the central area. In addition to these people too, you had the Swahili people, that is people who lived on the East African coast, but a combination of indigenous Bantus and uh, people from the Arab world, particularly um, Yemen and present day uh, Saudi Arabia um, and, and Qatar and so forth. They did trade with these people in Africa and eventually they became a mixed group of Bantus and East African groups of people coming from Asia and they built the great culture called Swahili. Actually, Swahili uh, in East Africa is translated as the people of the coast, Swahili. It became uh, one of the great civilizations in, uh, in Africa, particularly the Eastern area. And uh, brothers and sisters coming from Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Uganda, um, and uh, those other countries there, they are all part of this big group of people that live with the, with the uh, Bantu. But I should also mention that these people that I've mentioned did not come to meet a tabula rasa as far as civilization is concerned. For example, in the southern section of Africa, before these Bantus got there, there were the Khorasan people, uh, what uh, Europeans uh, sometimes refer to as the Hottentots, representing the Khorasan, and the Sun people, who were also referred to by the Europeans as Bushmen. The Khorasan were indigenous people there way back in the BC era ever before even the Bantu spread over to the southern uh, uh, area of uh, Africa. When these people got there, they built like a civilization. For instance, in the Congo area and the Angola, uh, before the Portuguese arrived, which we'll talk about later on, there were the Ovimbundu empires, the Rosi empire. In Zimbabwe, you had the Mweni Mutapa, uh, Europeans used to, uh, you know, they, they kind of corrupted the word and they used monomutapa. But the Zimbabweans, they, they, they call it mwene mutapa. It was a civilization very close to that of Egypt where they had stone building technology. I, I personally have been to the great Zimbabwe uh, when I was in Solusi. I went with my student to that place. Ancient structures of stone built without mortar. And these were palaces, there were homes, there were burial grounds that these people had developed ever before they got in, 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 in contact with people coming from Europe. So uh, the civilization of these uh, people, like I said, was a built-in indigenous system. They develop it through the knowledge and the wisdom that God had implanted in them. Because God created human beings, Africans, Europeans, Asians, and other people, Americans, they created as in God's own image. And because God created in our own image, it means that we, we, we have the capacity of, of thinking and making uh, conclusions uh, and making uh, uh, decisions. 
we have guns image is in us. And therefore, whether you live in Africa, you live in Europe, you live in Australia or America, the image is still there. And you use it to develop yourself and to thank God for giving you uh, that image. So um, I want to say that uh, uh, the, a, a summary of African civilization is what I've just given you to you. Uh, there are so many details that maybe um, when, when you ask questions or you bring comments, we can pull all of them together and see uh, how we are uh, going on on this topic. So uh, my brothers, my sister, uh, the, the, the sum total of what I'm saying is this. God created people into this world through Adam and Eve. These people over the years multiply just like God asked them to do. He told Adam and Eve to multiply and replenish the earth, fill the entire world. And Africans were a part of this group that filled this our continent, which is called Africa. In fact, the name Africa itself originated with the Berbers. The Berbers of present day Tunisia were the people that gave the name Africa. They, 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 they said their brothers and sisters who lived down south had a darker color than they had. And that is how they, 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 they originated the word Africa. It came from uh, present-day Tunisia during the days of um, um, these Berbers and the, and, the, and the cheap things and the societies that were developing there. So Africa was part of a world system created by God Kwame. That's what the, the Ghanaians call it the God of Saturday. And over the years, centuries, today we are where we are. We're talking about almost uh, some 5,000 years of this civilization. And we are thankful to the Lord for making us a part of the evolution of human society. We build on these societies we built on this history from generation to generation. And uh, civilizations develop uh, um, over the years with additions of ideas and developments. Um, when uh, we were children, um, there were certain things that um, we were doing that today we don't do. Civilization grows and also it learns from other civilization. That's another important thing to discover. There is no human being or society in this world that leads isolated life. We all borrow from one another because God has implanted ideas in all people. And there is no shame in learning from somebody that will help you to develop. There's no shame. You will learn what somebody has developed and then it becomes part of you. For example, there are many people that when, when, in America they, they, and in Europe, I think, they, 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 are, they, they, they wonder how African societies, uh, uh, you know, have extended families that uh, care for one another. Whereas in other places, they just be, a, 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 is a family just a man and wife and children. In African societies, we believe that God wants all people to be together. So our families are bigger and we support one another than other societies. So that's how civilization. If you go to a place where the people are doing a better work in developing their society, you also adopt certain things and they will help you. There's nothing wrong with that because we are all sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. And we, we, we pride ourselves in copying and laying and improving our civilization. 
So I think uh, the, 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 the story is long, but um, maybe uh, when, when questions come, we can elaborate a little bit more. The, the ion civilization, the, the, the Meru, the North culture, the Axumite um, uh, development, the Bundu development, and the Zimbabwean development, and all those other areas, we can uh, talk a few more about it. So I think uh, this is the prelim, and I hope uh, we can begin to talk more when the comments and the questions come from the audience. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, I'm, 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 appreciate, I'm appreciating what you have done for this session. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you so much, Prof, for that. I think that really set the tone for all listeners to begin to put in their questions. As we put in the comment section, if you have any question, please put them in the comment section. For viewers on Facebook, put them on the Facebook comment section as well, and we will pick them up. We'll ask them according to the orders that they come. Um, so while we wait for the compilation of the questions, Prof, I just wanted you to perhaps expand a bit more on the Ion civilization. Okay. Who are they and where were they? Okay. Well, uh, the Ion civilization, like I said, uh, as far as African history is concerned, uh, one area that is prominent in this story about Ion civilization was the city called Meru. It was, um, it was in a confluence of two rivers that join the Nile River and present day Sudan. Meru was a city that developed uh, iron smelting and using iron to make implements like saw, like daggers, like spears and cutlasses and so forth which were very much useful in the farming communi communities all over uh, in, in, in the area of Africa that they were, they were located. I mean, the Marriott, where they were located. Uh, iron was so useful for agricultural purposes, so useful in the armies where they had to fight their enemies with swords and dagger and things like that. That was located in present day Sudan, uh, the Meru. And then in West Africa, you also had the North culture. Uh, those of you who have a picture of the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the country of Nigeria, you know, the Niger River and the Benue River, they, 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 they come together in Northern Nigeria. At the confluence, just to the north of that place was located a, a place called Nok, N-O-K. They also had the, uh, the iron industry way back in history. And like I said, they used the iron in making all these implements that were very useful for agriculturalists and for, for soldiers and for uh, other um, people that needed tools made of iron. Iron was very much uh, the, the culture of these people. And in the trade that these people had with North Africa and, and, and the Nile Valley people, they used to send these to Egypt, to Ethiopia, to um, uh, uh, the Maghreb, that is uh, Morocco, Tunisia, Libya, Algeria uh, in our modern uh, in our modern calendar, uh, in our modern uh, geographical uh, pictures. So uh, these were two key centers, and it is believed that many of the areas in Africa that eventually also came into the iron culture had a lot of help from these two sources: Mero people or the Meroites in present-day Sudan and then knock people in present day Nigeria. They were, they were two key areas there. As we continue to share many more of said videos on African history, 
You do not want to miss our future uploads. Press the subscribe button. Thank you.